Hello everyone, my name is Charlie Simpkins and I'm the Digital Consultant for the Mississippi Library Commission. Today I will be providing an introduction to the Digital Media Service Overdrive, which is offered through a number of public library systems in Mississippi. Today I'm going to cover how to use Overdrive in a web browser. Please note that the demonstration videos were recorded on July 27, 2020 using the Chrome browser. Therefore, updates after July 27, 2020 are not able to be presented. I will also cover some ideas about how to promote the service and mention some of my recommendations for the service. I'm sure I once heard somebody say, meet them where they are, not where you want them to be. With the current COVID-19 situation, Libraries are reimagining how to meet their community's needs, implementing services like curbside pickups, pickup and go activities, virtual programs, and more. While we want patrons to visit the library, today presents a new challenge of imagining what a visit looks like. If they don't feel comfortable accessing your physical collections, then hopefully they are able to utilize your digital collections. If they have a library card account in good standing, access to the internet, and either a computer or smart device, then they may be able to access digital services from your library, if it is offered. Once registered, patrons are able to manage their own accounts, including checking out and returning digital media, all while maintaining social distance. So let's get into how to utilize one such digital service called Overdrive. To use Overdrive, you'll need to go to the website. To do that, you can find a link on your local library system's webpage. I'm going to use my Madison County Library System card for this demonstration. Once you're on the home page, on the right hand side you'll see an orange button that will say sign in. Click there to sign in. You will need your library card number and PIN number to sign in. I forgot my library card PIN number. So I'm going to use sign in using mobile number. I'm going to pause this right now because I don't want my phone number out on the internet. Once you enter the phone number and click send, it will send a code to that phone number. It's going to be a six digit number that you will enter to the website to verify who you are and this will log you in. This is what the overdrive home page looks like with my account. From this page we can search items, browse items, and check our account. I want to click my account on the right hand corner. There is a drop down arrow. It shows what you have checked out, the holds, what is on your wish list, if we have related titles, the history, and the settings. I want to check settings. Inside of our account on settings, you can set preferences for how long you want your ebooks and audiobooks available for checkout. This does not work for every single item. This is for there are some items that do not give you the option to change the checkout period. You can also have it selected to display your history that way if something gets checked in that you weren't finished with, you'll have access to the list. You don't have to try to remember what it was you have checked out. You can also set your content preferences. This will help if you have young children that are going to be accessing this account or if there's a specific age group like young adult that you like to listen to or read. One thing unique about Overdrive is that you can check out your items and then download it into your Kindle to read which is nice for people that are used to Kindle and if you go into the settings you'll see an option to only display Kindle downloadable options. You can also change the display options for high contrast or change the ebooks font to dyslexic font. If you're curious about how many items you can have checked out, on hold, or on your wish list, you can click the stack of books by my account. This takes you to your checkout list. It says you can borrow five more titles. This is determined by the library system the account is held with. After that, there's a hyperlink that says see all account limits. A pop-up window will come up and it shows how many items you can have checked out for the month, 
how many holds you can have, how many renewals per item, and how many items you can have on the wish list. To get out of this screen, you click OK or click the X. So let's look at how we can search for titles. One way is the browsing method using subjects or collections. The other is doing a specific search. We're first going to use the browsing method. So we can either go by collections. If you click collections, you'll see that it's separated by ebooks and audiobooks. I think I'm just going to click on subjects for now. You'll notice that at first it's selected for all formats, but I can separate it by ebooks or audiobooks. The first one, let's look for an audiobook. So I'm going to narrow it down to audio. And there's different categories. You have fiction audiobooks, nonfiction audiobooks, juvenile fiction, juvenile nonfiction, young adult, and young adult nonfiction. These categories are going to carry over to the ebooks. Also, I would like a short story audiobook. At the top of each cover, you'll notice a orange or white bar. Orange means the title is available for checkout at this time. If it's white and says waitlist, that means that it's checked out and you can be placed on hold for it. So I want to check out I Am Legend. So if I want some more information about this, I click the cover and you will see the title, the author, and the narrator listed. You'll also see a description at the bottom. If it's a long description, you'll put, click the down arrow to reveal more of the description. You can also click creators to see the author and the narrator. Details will give you the ISBN and the duration of the title. And there's also the option to look at some reviews. If you click the cover again, you will get a player that comes up to play a sample. If you want to play the sample, click the play button under the cover. Blackstone Audio presents... You can also change the speed at which is played. It goes from 1x to 2x. You can also set a timer for sleep mode. And if you click the stacked lines, the hamburger stack, you'll come up with the option for chapters. These are locked right now because it's not checked out. This is just a sample. But if you click any of these and it's checked out to you, it'll automatically go to that chapter. To get out of this player, you click X. To borrow the item, I'm going to click the orange box that says borrow. And I can, this one gives me the option to change from 14 days or 7 days. I'm going to prefer 14 days. And I will click borrow. It tells me the day that it, my pop up window tells me the day it will need to be returned or automatically returned. It also tells me I have four items available for checkout. This, since this is a web browser, I will be streaming this front through my through the internet. If I was on the app for a smartphone, um, if it's compatible, I would be able to download it. So let's look for another item. Let's go to subjects. Let's get an ebook. And uh, let's go to fiction. If you notice, most of these are waitlisted or checked out right now. If I want to narrow the options just to what is available at this moment, I will use one of the available filters to the left. 
under availability I would click available now I recommend you get into these filters and see how they affect your results this way you'll be familiar with them when trying to find an item for a patron and as I scroll down you see a lot of titles I've heard of this title but I don't want to check it out right now so I'm gonna actually add it to my wait list if you see the little ribbon with the plus sign you can click that and it adds it to your wait list this is the book I've been looking for I want to look at it to make sure it's actually the right one so I click the cover this has two copies available again if I want more details I can click details by the description it tells you the release date what formats it's available and I click borrow I'm gonna leave it at 14 days and click borrow this one I can download into Kindle or I can read it in my browser or I can download it as an EPUB ebook and read it in either Adobe or one other format. I cannot remember what the name of it is. So I'm going to close this to get out of it. And there is one other title. I know this. I know the specific title I'm searching for. So I'm going to click the search bar and click type in the title and push enter. I want to read the book Dog Man by Dave Pilkey. I can click borrow and borrow. Since this one is part of a series, you'll notice under the title there's a hyperlink that says Dogman Series Book 1. If you click that link, it'll show you the ones that are available through Overdrive. So we've talked about how some of the books are already checked out and you can be added to the wait list. I do want to go back to the screen that was on. It was ebooks and fiction. If you're curious about how long that wait may be, you can see that in Overdrive. Uh, if we wanted to read Utopia Avenue by David Mitchell, even though it's on hold, we will click the cover to go to that page. And it tells you the wait time is about two weeks. If you click the little question mark button after that it tells you that one copy is available one copy is available through the library and zero people are waiting so the person there's only one person ahead of you and that's the person that has it checked out uh, let's look at another one to compare the last flight interesting it says that there's only one copy through the system. The wait time is at least six months. So we're going to click. So we're going to click that question mark. It tells us again one copy in the library system through OverDrive, and there are 12 people waiting. That does not include who has it checked out right now. So there are really 13 people ahead of whoever places the next hold. So let's see how you actually read or listen to the ebooks or audiobooks through Overdrive on a web browser. I'm going to click to the left of my account onto the stack of books, and that takes me to my loan list. We're going to start with a regular ebook. So we're going to look at Valentine by Elizabeth Wetmore. You'll see that this one is available to download on Kindle, but for this webinar purpose, we are focusing on browser use, so I'm going to click the orange button that says Read Now in Browser. A new tab will open with the book. You'll see that the cover always starts on the right hand side. If I want to navigate to the right, I'll go all the way to the right and click there to move forward. If I want to go back, I can go all the way to the left of the screen and click there to move forward back in the book. You'll also notice that when you get to your table of contents they are blue and these are hyperlinked so any of these that you click will take you 
directly to that chapter. This appears to be very basic, but there is a way to open up more options. Just click in the center of the page. At the bottom, you'll see a scroll bar. That way you can actually scroll to whatever page you're looking for. You'll also notice there are the little tick marks. The dark, bolder ones are actual chapters. Let's get to a page with some text. On the top of the page, you'll notice a circle with a column of lines in it. We're going to click that. That will change our display from two columns of text to one column. If you want to go back, you click the same circle. Now it has two columns of lines. So if we click that, it'll go back to a two column display. If we're looking for a specific character or location in a book, you can click the magnifying glass and type it in here. This will take you directly to any reference of that person or event in the book. And if you want to see that complete context, you can click the page or the entry that's listed and it will take you to that citation. To get out of that, you just click X in the back arrow. Lastly, there's the hamburger stack or three lines. That is going to bring up all of your options. The one that I like the most is the reading settings. You can change, it gives you a preview at the top. You can increase your text size. You can also change the lighting of the page so it changes the text color and background. And the book design. Whenever you close out of this and you try to open the book again, it will go back to this page. If there's multiple pages that you want to go back to, click the ribbon in the top right hand corner and that will place a bookmark. The, you'll know there's a bookmark placed whenever that ribbon is filled in and you'll also see on the bottom scroll there is a bookmark there. You can place as many bookmarks as you want. And if you're in a hurry trying to find it, just click on the bookmarks across the bottom or click the hamburger stack and click bookmarks. To close all of the options, just click the center of the page. And to get out of the ebook, just close that tab. Let's look at how the reader looks different for a graphic novel or comic. We're going to look at Dogman by Dave Pilkey by clicking the orange button that says Read Now in Browser. The new tab opens up. I've already had this open. That's why it didn't go to the cover page. This is actually the first page. This works pretty much exactly like the regular ebook, but there are two noticeable differences. One difference is when I click and open my uh, view options, You'll notice where it says zoom with a circle on the top right. If we click that, it gives us the option to zoom in so that we can read the text and the, see the details of the panel pictures. You can move over the page by clicking and dragging. And if you still need to zoom in further, usually it'll say zooming 1.5 in the bottom left. That's the default setting. If you need to go in closer, click the on the bottom right the plus sign. If it's a little too close, click the minus sign. And once you get done, click the word done under the minus. The other difference is because of the zoom feature, uh, if you click the center of the book to bring up your options or your settings, on the top right hand corner, click the hamburger stack button. And under reading settings, this does not give you the ability to change the text size or font because the text is recognized as part of the artwork. That is why they've included the zoom feature. 
Everything else pretty much works exactly the same as a regular ebook. To close out of this, you just close that tab. The last way we can use media in OverDrive is through the audiobooks. We're going to look at I Am Legend and Other Stories by Richard Matheson. To view the player, we're going to click the orange box that says Listen Now in Browser. A new tab will open. And this looks exactly like that sample player that we saw earlier, except now it's going to be the full book. To listen to the actual audiobook, we'll click the play button in the center of the page under the cover. Blackstone Audio presents. You can change the playback speed by clicking the at what looks like a speedometer in the top left corner. It'll go from one to two times the speed. You can also set a sleep timer by clicking the moon. You can set bookmarks throughout your audiobook if you want to come back to listen to a passage again by clicking the bookmark ribbon. If you click it, you'll note that there's a bookmark placed by a filled in ribbon. They will also appear on the bar at the bottom wherever there is a ribbon placed. To remove a ribbon, just click the filled in ribbon once. The hamburger stack option gives you the option to skip to specific chapters. They are hyperlinked so that once you click it, it will take you directly to that chapter. Um, you'll also notice that there is a time frame. It looks a little confusing. Usually these just have how long that chapter is. This player gives you the total time of the audiobook. So chapter one starts at zero, zero, zero. Chapter two starts at 21 minutes, 41 seconds. So that means chapter one is about 21 minutes, not chapter two. To get out of the hamburger stack menu, click done. And to close the web browser the player, close that tab. The last thing that we need to go over is how to return an item. This will help move the item along to other people if there's a wait list and it goes ahead and clears it off your account. So to return an item, underneath every entry you'll see the return icon and it looks like a box with an arrow pointing to the right. You will click where it says return and it asks for confirmation. If you click return title here, the title is returned and you will lose your bookmarks or your place in the book and to get it back out you would have to use another checkout. I am not going to return these titles now because I want to read and listen to them so I'm going to click cancel. Before I begin talking about promoting OverDrive, I want to remind you to follow your library system's policies regarding who can post what and where. If a local restaurant has an amazing new dish, how do they introduce it to their customers? They may put signs up at strategic locations or post about it on social media. They may include an advertisement on the receipt or even mention it in conversation with the patron. So let's imagine your library is the restaurant and OverDrive is the new dish. Where can you advertise or promote OverDrive? Here are a few ideas. If your library is offering curbside pickup, try posting signs reminding patrons the digital library is always open. If you do this, please make sure the signs are large enough to be seen and read by the patrons from the comfort of their vehicles. Try to incorporate bookmarks into your checkout procedures. When you are checking out items for a patron, whether in the library or for curbside pickup, slip a bookmark promoting overdrive into one of the items. Don't forget about social media. If your library has a Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram account, use its reach to advertise the OverDrive service in specific items. Speaking of specific items, you could also try some reader's advisory signage specifically for OverDrive titles. You can try signs like New to Comics, Most Checked Out Items of 2019, or If You Liked, Then You May Enjoy signs.
Before I came to the Mississippi Library Commission, I was a public librarian and I would often find myself assisting patrons and sometimes even co-workers with the digital media services that my library system offered. It can be intimidating to try and explain how to use these types of services if you don't use them yourself. So my first recommendation is to actually use the service yourself. I know some people prefer the tactile experience of physical books, but exposure to the product is going to help you feel more confident with the service. Take some time and browse the titles. Look at how the pages are displayed and how the filters work. If you prefer the physical book so you don't want to spend a lot of time reading a digital novel, try using the digital picture books. You'll need to go through the process yourself of searching for, checking out, and returning a book. You'll also need to see how to turn the pages and if you can change the font size. Secondly, I would recommend you practice walkthroughs with a partner. It may sound silly, but take turns role-playing with a co-worker, if possible. Have one person be the librarian and the other play the new patron. When you are playing the part of the new patron, be reasonable with your questions. It may sound fun to come up with a who's on first routine while role-playing, but it wouldn't be productive. Think back to questions you had when you first started using the service or that people have asked you. Thirdly, I would recommend checking the web page and apps for the service frequently, say every two to four weeks. This will help you stay aware of any changes or updates which your patrons may and will contact you about. Fourthly, I recommend you not knock the digital services. This may influence some patrons not to give it a chance when they would otherwise really enjoy the product. Don't say things like, I can't stand reading on my phone, tablet, or computer, or people are always having trouble with that. You never know how much a patron values your opinion. Also, if a patron is having trouble logging into their digital media account, check to make sure their library card is not expired and is in good standing. In my experience, this was the cause of many of the login issues. And lastly, act like you're talking to 4th and 5th graders. Before I worked in a public library, I taught 4th and 5th grade for 5 years. When I explain something new to someone, I try to use the same approach and language as I did with my 4th graders. By that, I mean using simple, concise language and easy-to-follow steps. I am not saying to talk down to anyone. Thank you for joining me for this introduction to Overdrive. If you have any questions or comments about this topic, or ideas for future topics, please let me know. I've included my contact information on the screen. I look forward to hearing from you and have a nice day.